Titan Electro is back and with a properly good UPS this time. Good after morning and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I'm Reese of the four piece variety or Wicked Triple XL. And I've been given this new Titan Elex tool, well, not new, but the NPS. And it's the one that I wanted to test because it has enough cold crank amps to actually start up my big boy router. I've got a tough AX5400 and yeah, these smaller units, which can max out at about 38 watt, that router uses 30 watt just straight. So trying to put the ONT and that on, the, on there at the same time, it, it didn't have enough to start the router up. That's when it you know, would use its maximum as the process is running at full to get the OS and the operating system running so that it can then control the rest of the network. So that was a problem. But this doesn't have that problem, not by a long shot, because this sucker can put out 100 watts. It's got a 75 watt hour total battery capacity, 24,000 miles thereof, and enough connectivity that you can run like a, actually a small space station from this. It's actually a little bit more industrial, and I really like that because it's not a huge amount of money more than the very entry level ones. And yeah, for your folks who have just a basic LTE router or like a 50 meg, you know, uh, LTE or, or um, brain words, a 50 meg fiber setup. There we go. That's the one I was looking for. for something entry level, that's going to work perfectly. But for us gamers, you'd like to have maybe a little bit of extreme networking. As I said, I've got the tough AX5400, which has, you know, more aerials than Jacob Zuma could even pronounce. It's very, very good for that. And it's got a couple of extra features that allow it to be quite a bit more flexible than I was actually expecting. So without further ado, let's go through what's in the box. You obviously get the big boy over here. Then you get a myriad of connections and cables, including they do throw in a nice little kettle plug in there. But the nicest ones are these extenders they are there are two single extenders for your routers and then a two into one as well so if your router and your ont don't exceed eight amps you'll be able to run it off just this one which is really really nice it also comes with six different adapters so if your router has something weird or funky and it's not sort of default like both of mine were, they, I didn't need any of the adapters in my use case, then you'll be able to, if it's thinner or thicker, et cetera, be able to at least adapt that for your router. And perhaps even like a small laptop or netbook or uh, you know, tablet, et cetera, then you should may, maybe be able to adapt with that and charge it from this unit, which is absolutely fantastic. Around the front, we have a really nice indicator screen on the front left over here, and it even shows the wattage when it's under use. So you can see exactly how many watts are being drained from it. So you can get an idea of, oh, okay, 10 watts into 75, I'm gonna get seven hours worth of usage out of it. Battery indicator next to that, it does have the voltage in and out over there, um, which you can cycle through with the power button, and you can see the voltage in or out on the readout as well, with a little blue power button that sits on the front over there. Then on the front right hand side, you've got a USB Type-C and two USB Type-A's, and all three of those are 5 volt 2.4 amp. So if you've got like phones and stuff that can take advantage of fast charging, then you can connect them straight in the front over there, which is exactly what I did. You can see my S9 sitting on top and it charged at exactly the same rate as the uh, proper charger that I've got for the phone. Then around the back is where things get truly interesting. On the right hand side, you've got the kettle plug and a nice little fan. And that's actually really good to have because the lower the temperature of the battery, the longer its lifetime. So if your environment is a little bit hot, at least there will be some cooling built in for, for it to save the battery. And then the left hand side is where things get absolutely mental. There's a nine volt and 12 volt switch and you can see the 12 volt has eight amps maximum output. So like I said, for my system, which is the 3.6 amp and then a 1.2 max for the ONT, it could all run off one port, which is what I would have done if I didn't have them on the opposite ends of each other. But then on the top row, you've also got a 12 volt 3 amp max output. So you can then split off, but you can see how many inputs there are. I mean, there's four of the 3 amp and eight and five of the eight. So this thing is intended to power actually quite a lot of stuff. If you were needing it to power uh, uh, several devices, for 
like a couple hours, then you would be able to do that off of here, especially if the wattage is quite low. As I said, the boot up wattage on this is probably about 40, but that only lasts about five minutes and then it goes back down to about eight. So that's why it wasn't running off of the 38 watt hour max output device because yeah, it just it couldn't, cut, it couldn't quite get to the wattage level that was needed for the router to start up. Then there's a five volt in there as well. And like I say, a switch for the nine volt on the, on the yellow pin over there. So this has, Practical flexibility where you can connect it to like pretty much any like DC device you would want to. It's also got surge protection, overcharge protection, so it's not going to blow anything up. Um, they also have even quoted on here for computer monitors because some of those adapters that you get run on like 12 volt. So it's intended to even perhaps run something like that. But the way I see you using this is just adding it to your stack with your router and with your ONT and you can stack both on top of here and then you can run everything very easily. These cables are plenty long as well, especially the split cable over here. Uh, if I just unravel it for a moment, then you guys can see. They put pretty good distance and stuff on these cables. This is a 1.5 meter cable over here. Each one is gonna be about 1.5 meters. So there's plenty of cabling, plenty of adaptability. And because of that 100 watt per, se per hour output that it can do, it means that it could go from full to flat in about 45 minutes. In my testing, I ran my router and stuff, like it says over here for about seven hours. I actually got way better than that because I charged my phone off of this and my battery bank to go over like 20 watt sort of concurrent usage, like consistently between the two. So I had the router, ONT, and I was charging my phone and I was charging my power bank off of it as well simultaneously. And then it still lasted seven hours while doing that. So the quoted wattages and the outputs and stuff are exactly on point. Charge time was a little bit long. It was four and a half hours. So if you don't get, so I would say if you've got like a four hour load shedding with a two hour gap in between, and then another four hour load shedding, it's gonna sit across the top of the cell. And that's very good for its lifetime as well. You don't really wanna go under 20% on most batteries. That's where they start to get serious degradation and a lot less cycles come out of them. So this with its battery meter being in quarters is absolutely perfect because when you get to the lower quarter, that's actually where I would stop using it. And then it, when you recharge and discharge, etc., it's gonna keep that good lifetime. And you should be able to get like a couple thousand cycles out of it because lithium ion phosphate does kind of have a good lifetime and work like that. So the Titan Linux store, I've really liked their products because they've been very much on point with what they quote on the box. It's very much accurate and it looks like the product's been well developed and well tested for that. Around the bottom though, you'll see it's just got like four little feet. I kind of wish they had put a vase amount on the bottom over there. They do give you a little 3M uh, rubberizing bits so you can rubberize each of those if you want to. but. I just can't help but feel a vase amount would have really completed this and made it just a little bit better. That's about the only change I would have on this though. The readout on the front is fantastic so you can see actually what you're drawing from the battery and then you're going to know how long it's going to last. So all in all, it gives us a solid 9 out of 10. And the good news for you as the viewer is this exact unit is going to be on giveaway. So do watch out for that on the eCheck channel. Anyway, that is all I have for you on the Titan Leg Store NPS. Until next time, I hope you guys stay safe, keep well, and I will see you on the flip side. We stand surrounded. We are not alone. We